So welcome, Ebony, thank you very much for, for coming here today. Um, again, take us back to the beginning. Mm. How did you first get interested in playing cricket? Yeah, random, actually. Um, I grew up in Hernhill, South London. I had three older brothers, and I loved football, but had no experience of cricket. Um, I thought it was, if I'm honest, I thought it was a rubbish game. I didn't get it. Men stood in fields just in white clothing. What's going on? There's a lot of maths <laughs> in it. I can see why. It's quite daunting at Exactly. First. Um, so anyway, uh, a lady came in, uh, sorry, not a lady, an organisation came in to do like a one-off taster session um, and my teacher convinced me I said no miss I'm not doing it I'm not doing it she said just try it this once um, anyway the moment I hit the first ball I saw it fly out I, I literally was hooked I was the only girl as well and I was like I can do this I can take the boys out um, <laughs> so from that moment I literally I got invited to a course and that was it I was talent scouted and then my whole life changed from that one day wow mm. I mean I who were your who were your cricketing heroes and were any of the yeah. women? So that's a good point actually. It, it's very been very male dominated. It's an old boys club at such. It's obviously changing a lot um, when you have got the likes of me and others in there. Um, but growing up, I looked at my early heroes were like Alex Stewart and and anyone who's a, a cricket fan. You know these are good old boys who are there. Um, but then as you sort of start to get into the game, there's the likes of Charlotte Edwards now, who's a lady who's becoming a force in in the world of. Um, the women's game. And, but early doors, it was the guys, it was the men, because there weren't that many female role models really to look up to. Mm. Um, but, you know, fortunately, the, the world has changed. Um, I mean, you have this host of remarkable achievements mm. from, you know, being the first um, woman of colour to play for England, captaining Surrey, winning the World Series. Mm. Is, is there is there one that you, you look back on and feel the most satisfaction? Yeah, definitely. I think number one has to be winning the World Cup. And I think it's for the build-up to it. I When I was 19, so I was, I was playing. I didn't know where I was going with my cricket. I was still sort of playing and went to university at the same time. And, you know, you start university, you have this whole plan of this perfect world. I'm going to finish, I'll graduate, I'll keep playing cricket on the side. And within a few months, I got an injury where I um, had two prolapse di discs, um, pars defect. I couldn't walk for a year and um, I had to leave university because I couldn't actually sit up um, I was told I'd never play sport again. It was just one of these whatever, and I fell into a depression. Um, and the worst thing about depression is that daytime TV. Like, I watched every episode of Homes Under the Hammer that there is. Um, and I was in a really dark place, to be honest. And um, I'm lucky. I've got a really great mum who's quite, like, inspirational and always trying to pump you up. And at the end, like, at the end of a year, she, she did a few things. She gave me a bit of a talking to. My brother did as well. But she gave me a tape of Tony Robbins. He's, like, a motivational guru or whatever it was. And she was like, just listen to it. And I was like, Ugh. and by this time I'd put on a lot of weight as well. Like a year of just lying in bed wasn't good. Um, so I listened to this tape and he was talking about like, have a vision, set your goals. And at that stage, I never really, I never really knew what I wanted to do, but I hadn't really sort of got clear about what I was trying to achieve. Mm -hmm. So I wrote um, two things to get back to university and to get a master's in chemistry and to be part of the World Cup squad. And at this stage, I hadn't actually even played for full England. Uh, but I just wrote it and I looked at it and it took three years of like learning to walk again, then learning to run. Um, but to be able to have had that vision in a bed where you were to be able to go on, I think I, I just cried like nobody's business because it was just incredible to not only be there, but to win it was amazing. I mean, it's been a good couple of years for women's sport. You know, England mm. women's teams have won the Ashes, you know, the Rugby World Cup. Um, women could race in the, the traditionally the men's boat race for the very mm. first time. Why has it taken so long for mainstream sport to, to get there, to get to this point? It's taken way too long, hasn't it? Um, the, the reasons, who knows? I mean, we could go into a lot of reasons. I think what is exciting is the momentum. I think the Olympics being here in 2012 was incredible. You know, young girls um, looking up to idols had someone to, to relate to. You've got great role models like Jessica Innes, um, who, you know, you see the side of her as a mum and a wife as well as on TV. And I think that's important to relate. But but I think that it's taken a while maybe for, especially with sport, I mean, there was always talk of, like, tennis ladies, you know, they look great or whatever it might be. Women are now really just supported for being incredible athletes and incredible people, um, real people. And that growth of support, I think it's really building momentum. Um, I just feel like there's a, a real... Uh, like kind of women's power at the moment. You know, there's the This Girl Can campaign and anyone who's seen it, it shows women jiggling around and it's not that perfect image which sometimes we always try to, to live up to. Um, it's real women and, and what I'm just loving is seeing that and, and I just hope it continues and I think the Olympics was a great sort of start point.
That's fantastic. So what's the best piece of advice that mm. you've picked up? I mean, you know, you said what an amazing role model your mum was, but I wonder whether anybody that you've worked with, any of your peers mm. and, you know, fellow sports, sports people had taught you anything that you would like to pass on? Um, there's a few things I could go on forever. I think some of the things I would say is um, the word opportunity. And I think we heard uh, the word opportunity mentioned a little bit earlier is um, learning to see the world through a lens of opportunity um, is something that's really helped. And, and that's the negatives and the positives. So I talk about my back. Now I see that and that sort of thing is an opportunity to grow. But there's so many exciting opportunities. I mean, now to be working in the media... Um, at first, I was nervous because you're doing something that, you know, you're working with the guys and you're the only woman talking cricket with these these guys that are very, you know, well-known in the industry. But now I see it as an opportunity, actually. If me and the other lady, uh, Ishgu and Alison Mitchell, who's a, a great um, broadcast journalist, we're, we're actually paving a way for another generation. So whereas before when I went up and I was nervous about myself, I'm like, this is an opportunity to do something new. Um, to try and help pave a way. And, and I think that then changes how you approach things. So it's that mental shift, mm. making that shift. Okay. Um, very interesting. Well, speaking of the next generation, we're going to welcome one of them now. I'm really excited about this. This is 12-year-old Maisie Hunkin, who plays for the Frenchy Flames and Gloucestershire Under-13s. <laughs> welcome. Um, what is the most important thing cricket has taught you? Oh, that's a good question. Um, do you know, I, th I think cricket's like life in the sense of like, and that sounds really boring if you don't like cricket, I'm sorry. Um, <laughs> but it, it, in the sense of there's so many ups and downs. So, you know, like if you go out and you, you one day you might get 100 or you get 50 or something like that um, and you feel great. And then the next day you get zero and you've like, you've played the same shot. You've done the same things, but it's just not happened for you. Do you know those days? So I think it's just kind of given me that excitement. But um, you're always having to push yourself to be better. And I think that's what I've learned the most about it. Did you ever believe you were getting to England? <laughs> no. Before, before the back injury, no. I, well, yes and no. I kind of loosely would have hoped, but I didn't have a real um, vision for it. Then after, like I said, deciding to come back and... Um, deciding to give it a go, that's when the first time I really started to believe it. And um, yeah, it was pretty incredible. Do you want to play for England? Yeah. <laughs> Do you believe you can play I've for England? You've said it now. <laughs> You've said it now, well done. That's it, anointed, that's it, it's decided. Um, listen, thank you so much, it's absolutely fantastic. Thank you very much to Maisie, and of course, thank you, Ebony. Absolutely brilliant, thank you.